What kind of commercial clay is best for making primitive pottery? I have no idea, but let's find out. So here's the plan. I've got four kinds of commercial clay here. I've got New Mexico clay super sculpture. I've got Laguna Redstone. I've got Laguna Speckled Buff. I've got Hobby Lobby's Moist Pottery Clay X15. So I'm gonna try all these clays on primitive pottery and rate them for both hand building ability and for firing. So here's the thing. Commercial clays generally don't have enough temper to withstand the thermal shock involved in outdoor pottery firing. So I'm gonna divide each of these into two lumps. One that is used as is, and the other that is 20% sand added to it. So I will make a total of eight pots out of these four types of clay, and we will see how they do in hand building and outdoor pottery firing. Let's get started right now. All right, so I've got eight bags of clay here. I've got them weighed, so they're all the same amount of clay. Now I'm going to add 20% temper to one of each of the different types of clay. Okay, I finished forming the eight bowls from the four types of commercial clay. Let me rank them now based on how easy they are to hand build with. So to start my list, speckled buff is the hardest for hand building. It's really, really firm. You could literally get hand cramps if you spend all day trying to hand build pottery with speckled buff. On the other hand, it's very high in wet strength, which tends to be the other side of the coin for very firm clays. The second most difficult is the Hobby Lobby clay. Like speckled buff, the Hobby Lobby clay tended to be very firm, took a lot of strength to form it into a pot. Tending higher in usability is the Laguna Redstone clay, which was much softer than the previous two clays I've talked about, much more easy to form. On the other hand, it was a little more lacking in wet strength than these other two. In fact, the tempered redstone clay was almost familiar to me. It was almost felt like some of my wild clays that I use. Now, the most usable of these commercial clays was the New Mexico clay super sculpture. In fact, right out of the box, it comes tempered. It's grogged clay. Both of these, the tempered and the untempered super sculpture clay, were very, very easy for me to use. Now the next stage of this test is to fire these. So I'm gonna let these dry thoroughly and then I'm gonna take them out in the field and I'm gonna fire them just like I would any other pot I made. All right, it's about 8.30 on a beautiful February morning. Nice and cool out here. Air's really still. It's a perfect day for firing pottery. I've got my test bowls sitting around the fire preheating back here. So I'm gonna fire those bowls this morning and we're gonna find out how those commercial clays hold up to my firing method. Okay, look at this. This is the speckled buff untempered. It's already starting to go to bits. This was the center of my stack. I'm gonna pull it out because if everything's stacked on top of it and it falls apart, everything falls apart. The whole stack caves in. So I'm gonna put the speckled buff tempered in the center of the stack, restack the pots over it. Hopefully we won't have any more breakage. Okay, and then I'm gonna stick this speckled buff untempered right in the center. But it's a sacrificial lamb. It's obviously gonna go to pieces.
Okay, a quick update. Uh, it's been about an hour since I stacked the pots in there and started the fire. Uh, it's burned down to coals. Now this is exactly what I want. You see how we've got a layer of coals kind of setting over those cover sherds. That's just like a little oven holding that heat in there and that's gonna allow those pots to cool down very slowly. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool down naturally very slowly for another half hour or so probably. And then I'll start sweeping those coals away, kind of pulling the cover sherds off and we'll see how the pots are doing underneath. Now I did hear some breakage early on. I heard pots kind of popping apart in there. I am expecting to see some breakage, uh, especially in those untempered commercial clays. So stand by, we'll see what we got. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see how these pots did. Again, I wanna note that I fired this very slowly. I dug a little pit which helped protect the pots from the cold air. That is something I don't usually do. And I started the fire at the top which allowed it to burn down slowly and the temperature to rise slowly which helped nurse these through. So if you are trying to fire commercial clays, that is one thing to keep in mind is you can nurse them through sometimes. So. Just, just with that out of the way, knowing that these were fired carefully, let's go through the list of the commercial clays we have here and rate them. At the bottom of the list is speckled buff. This is the untempered speckled buff pot that started falling apart before I even lit the fire, just stacked on rocks over the hot coals, was more than it could handle. Now, here's speckled buff tempered. It has one spall on the very bottom. Um, does it ring? Oh yeah, it rings nicely. So. Uh, even that is usable. Next on the list, we've got Hobby Lobby, and uh, it's got three or four spalls on it. This is the untempered one, okay? So uh, that would be the second worst on the list. And here is Hobby Lobby tempered. Not a single spall on it. And, uh, and like I said, these could have more temper in them. Rings nicely, so we know that it is fired hard enough. Third on my list is the Laguna Redstone. This is the Laguna Redstone untempered, and believe it or not, there does not seem to be a single crack or spall in this pot. Rings like a bell. Like I said, it wasn't too bad to build with and came through the firing untempered. And here's, of course, the Laguna Redstone tempered, which is also unbroken, unspalled. And then uh, top of the list, number one commercial clay for using in primitive pottery has got to be that super sculpture from New Mexico clay. Here's the untempered. Now remember, it already has some temper in it and that made it really usable when I was building. It really built nicely. This is the untempered one and it rings nice. Not a crack or a spall on it. And this is the tempered one. Again, does not seem to have a crack or a spall on it. Uh, that came out really good. So now that you know what clays you might want to use, if you are interested in making primitive pottery in the city without even leaving town, you want to check out this video right here, which is going to go into making primitive pottery using just store-bought materials for your tools, for your clay, and even how to fire in your yard. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.